Hello there, I'm John Weber with TechNection and welcome to episode two of Yocto Project Customization 101, Customizing the Bootloader. In this episode, I'll show you how to customize U-Boot, specifically how to use your own U-Boot Git repository instead of our GitHub repository, which is where code is fetched from normally. This allows you to maintain your own U-Boot with your own customizations and, and integrate that with the Yocto Project-based distribution. As a bonus, we'll also show you how to use a custom splash screen image and integrate that into the Yocto metadata so that when you build your images and load them, the custom splash screen is already shown by default. Just to review, in episode one, we made our custom Yocto metadata layer and machine configuration file, and we'll be adding to that in this episode and throughout the series. So make sure to go back and review episode one if you haven't already seen it. First, just to cover a little bit of how open embedded BitBake builds, in this recipe, a download location is specified for use for the build. This can be a Git repository or other location on the internet, just a compressed file like a zip file or tallball archive. For U-Boot, in our recipe, it is a Git repository on GitHub. In order to build from a custom repository, we'll need to modify the recipe so that instead of fetching from the TechNection GitHub repo, we'll be fetching from a custom repo. In this case, our custom repo is going to sit on my machine here. I've set up a local Git server here. In case you're wondering how to do that, here's a great article showing you how to get started with that. Architecturally, we don't have to modify the original recipe for U-Boot though, if all we want to do is switch the source code location and things. Open Embedded provides a very nice mechanism for making small changes to recipes using something called BB Append. Remember when I said that metadata in Open Embedded is organized in layers? Well, a BB Append file acts as an overlay on top of an existing recipe, allowing you to tweak a recipe itself. So now we're gonna go ahead and do this. So first we're going to get a special branch of the U-Boot repository set up, so that will be our source for our recipe. We're going to assume that you already have a copy of the U-Boot TN IMX repository cloned, and you have a local Git repository. I'm gonna create a new branch here called scorpion underscore test, and then I'm going to push that branch to my local repository. So let me go ahead and get to my source code here. I'm gonna go ahead and show that, so git status. So right here, I'm on our branch from GitHub. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new branch. So git checkout dash b score scorpion underscore test. All right, so now I have this. So this is the same code as the other one, but I wanted to show you that we're gonna go ahead and switch the branch name to scorpion underscore test because that's going to be important because this is what we're going to specify in our recipe. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push that. Let me just do this. Actually, let me show you guys. Git remote show local. Local is the name of my local Git repository. So you can see there's a bunch of different branches in here, but this is the local Git repository. So that's here on my, on my local machine, git push local scorpion underscore test. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and create a new branch there. So now we have everything set up. This is a branch scorpion underscore test in my local Git repository. So I can go ahead and exit out of there. I don't actually need that anymore. I'm gonna create a new one here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a BB append file in our metadata layer which is Metascorpion. We'll need to do this in the right location. So open up a terminal. I'm gonna use a program called Visual Studio Code. I highly, highly recommend this program. It's a Microsoft product. It is incredibly useful. You can extend it to do a lot of different things. So I have this installed on my machine here. All I have to do is just run code. So now I have Visual Studio Code up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a folder. And the folder I'm gonna open up is the main root of the metadata folder that I'm looking for. So uh, I can find that in mine is projects TN Yocto Zeus Next Sources. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And the reason why I'm opening it up is I'll show you, it makes it very easy to do comparisons of one directory to another directory. And that can be useful when you're trying to uh, create layers. In order to modify the U-Boot recipe for, uh, for Metascorpion, to so be able to um, pull from our local repository as opposed to the GitHub repository, I'm gonna need to create a BB append file. But it's very important that I put that in the right location. Where that needs to go is it needs to go in the same sort of directory structure as you'll find in 
in the rest of the metadata. So in this case, find these, the U-boot recipe in meta tn imx bsp. I'm gonna find that in a subdirectory called recipes-bsp and u-boot. So I need to create the same subdirectory structure here. And you can do that very easily in VS Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit new folder. So recipes, recipes-bsp. And then I'm gonna create a new folder underneath this called u-boot. All right, so I have this folder here. Now I'm going to create a file in this called u-boot-tn-imx underscore percent sign dot bb a pen. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here. New file u-boot-tn-imx underscore percent sign dot bb append. All right, so a little bit note here on this percent sign. That is essentially a wildcard character to indicate that this bb append file should be applied to any version of this recipe. You can see the recipe version is here, v2020 underscore or dot zero four. Um, so this is just a, a simple way of saying this will apply to any version of that recipe. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna add a few lines to this recipe and it's going to be fairly simple and I'll show you why. I'm just gonna copy, I'm just gonna cut and paste here. Just prevent you from having to see me do a lot of typing. What this line does is it extends this rest, this variable here to include an additional path um, which is important because what we're going to do in the future with uh, with extending the splash screen, um, it's going to need to in include this path. And the source server is something that's important. And in order to show you how this uh, works, um, I've already showed you an animation earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and bring up this bitbake file, this uh, recipe file here, and I'll show you in parallel how this works. So the source server here is to my local Git server. And that is going to take the uh, place of this source, of this SRC server variable here in git slash github technection. This is the normal GitHub repository. Then source branch is going to be scorpion underscore test. That's gonna take over this particular variable. It's gonna replace this variable, which is pointing to the, the v2020.04 uh, next branch here. And then the source rev, this is an interesting one, and this is very useful for development. Um, normally in production, you would specify the checkout hash of the branch that you're going to be using. And this is to make sure that you're always checking out the same exact code for every build. However, when you're making lots of changes to local repositories or even remote repositories, especially if you're doing things like nightly builds, having uh, the ability to check out the latest version in any specific branch is important. And that's what this uh, dollar sign auto rev does. So that's what this is. So all this is going to do, this BB append file is gonna do, is it's going to essentially replace the contents of these variables in the file that we're talking about here in this particular recipe. Go ahead and save that. That, control S, so I saved it, and now we have our BB append file written. So the next thing to do is we need to go ahead and we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set up our build environment. So I'm just gonna make sure I go to my directory here. Okay, and then I just go dot dot slash setup environment build x wayland so we're set up here and if we've done everything correctly the first thing we need to do after we change a recipe like this is to go ahead and clean it out so if we've done any other builds in the past we want to make sure that package is completely deleted from the build so just in case there's some sort of uh you know stateful misalignment there so i'm going to go ahead and just uh rebuild this recipe but i'm going to clean it out u dash boot dash tn dash imx that's the recipe name let me go ahead and extend this out a little bit. And then dash C clean S state. It's gonna clean out anything that's been built so far and it's also gonna clean out the shared state cache. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. These are benign errors or benign warnings, so don't worry about those things. Okay, so we've cleaned out the recipe and now all we need to do is we can just bit bake the image. Bit bake IMX dash image dash core. And we're gonna build a new image here um, with building the U-boot from our local repository instead of the remote GitHub repository that we would normally do by default. Okay, 
And we're going to go ahead and pause here and uh, wait for the image to finish building. And then we'll come back to you uh, shortly. Okay, so now the build is complete uh, and we have an image. Now this is not going to be physically different that much from any of the other images that we have built so far. All we've done is we've changed the source location for U-Boot to be a local repository, a slightly different branch, but uh, same content as what we were building before. But I wanted to show you a couple of things here that can help you at least give you some confidence that you're pulling from the right correct location. So um, you can run BitBake and you can show the local environment or the environment variables that BitBake generates for a particular recipe. And you can search that for the for the variables that we have modified in our recipe. So there is a variable called, let's just check it, called SRC server. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that. I'm gonna pipe to grep that. And what it should show here is that this source server variable should be set to this particular uh, path. Okay, so you can see source server here, SRC server is my local Git repository, which is great. All right, now, um, I can also check to make sure that the source branch variable is set correctly using the same exact mechanism. Okay, so source branch is scorpion underscore test. Now we know that when this image was built, it was pulling U-Boot from our local repository using our local branch that we created. So we're good here. So now what I wanna show you is how to create a custom splash screen. U-Boot includes the capability to load a splash bitmap image from the boot file system or other locations as well, but in RBSP, this is how it's configured by default. What is needed is to configure the metadata so that our custom splash image is loaded instead of the default one. There is an easy way to do that by simply dropping the correct file into the metadata in the correct location. Notice that in the main U-Boot TNIMX recipe, which we'll bring that back up again here, and I'll show you. There's a file here specified under this, this variable called source URI append. What this does is it appends this file name and includes that in the list of locations to be used when fetching the source code. So this is a file that we should drop into our file system or into our, our metadata layer um, in order for it to uh, be populated into the, the boot file system. Just to show you that by default, TechNection, we do put a splash screen located in our directory here under u-boot-tn-imx. Um, that's the default splash screen that you'll see. So what I've done is I've created a kind of a fun splash screen because it's a scorpion. I've taken this same thing and I've put a little bit of a scorpion clip art um, into it. So just to show you that these things are a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that into our metadata and I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and close these up because we don't need them anymore. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a directory here. The reason I gotta create a new folder here called, actually not in that directory. I wanna create a new folder here. U-boot-tn-imx. And I wanna drop this into that folder. Let me see if I can just drop that in there. Okay, I guess I will have to copy that there. That's fine. Let me just go ahead and do that. Uh, Scorpion recipes dash BSP uboot uboot TNIMX. I'm just going to go CP little slash desktop because that's where this splash is located. Scorpion underscore splash BMP. And I need to put that in a file called splash.bmp because by default, uboot looks for that file, a file of that name to be loaded by default. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now I have a file under here called splash.bmp. And if I look at it, it's my splash screen with a scorpion in it. So that's all good. So now all we should have to do is rebuild because the existing recipe down here will pull that splash screen image right here and it will populate it. And it will do that because it has a couple of little steps here that install the splash screen into the correct location. So all we should have to do is rebuild now. So if I can just go ahead and bitbake IMX image core. And so we're gonna pause here and wait for that to finish building and we'll be back with you after a little bit. Okay, so now that the image is built, we need to flash that to our EMMC of our board to make sure that the splash screen is correct. So I have the board plugged up here, it's powered on, and I have the serial port connected. I need to go ahead and start up a terminal session. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The way I do that is sudo screen 
slash dev slash TTY USB 0 115 200. All right, that's just the terminal program that I use. You could use any terminal program of your choice. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here and then I can go ahead and just reboot the board. Um, if I'm in Linux, just use the reboot command and I wanna halt here. So you can see the splash screen is the old splash screen. Or So I'm gonna go ahead and reprogram this. So UMS 0 MC 2, go ahead and reload it. I'm gonna go ahead and start up Belena Etcher. I'm gonna select a file and I'm going to go to projects, TN Yocto, Zeus, build X Wayland, temp, deploy, images, scorpion, and then finally go look for the WIC image, select the target, and flash. Okay, all right, we're gonna go ahead and pause and wait for this flashing process to finish up and we'll come back here shortly. Okay, so now that we're done here uh, with Etcher, it's uh, finished flashing. We're gonna go ahead and exit out of that. We're gonna exit out of UMS and we're gonna reboot the board just to make sure that everything is correct. So let's go ahead and reset. And if everything looks good, oh, there's our splash screen. Yay, it shows a little scorpion. So um, just to review, what we've done in this episode is we showed you how to make a BB a pen file to modify the recipe and switching the source for the recipe to your private repository. We also showed you how to include a custom splash screen image into your metadata so that it is loaded and displayed in the images that you build. In the next episode, we'll show you how to do a similar thing. But instead of the bootloader, we'll be showing you how to do this with the Linux kernel. Stay tuned. I'm John Weber. See you next time.